Hey Alex, thank you for being here. No problem. We have been working together for the past few years as a leader of our platform services. Why don't you kick start with what are the platform services that you own and why they are super compelling for our customers? Sure thing, Vinay. Um, platform services in OCI are the connective tissue that kind of joins all the other services together. So you've got identity and access management, uh, everything to do with account provisioning and account lifecycle, metering and making sure that the customer's bill is correct, uh, as well as a bunch of foundational features like compartments and tagging and the limits and resource quotas that customers need for resource governance. And within OCI, we have essentially reinvented every services that we have built from scratch. Mm -hmm platform is no different, and what are the places where we have taken a leapfrog in how they're built and serviced for customer? So I think our vision in platform services is to be the best cloud to run enterprise workloads on. I don't think that other clouds have imagined from like an enterprise first perspective what, what those customers need in order to be successful. I think that when you look at the hierarchical uh, opportunities for organizing resources that are offered by compartments, and then you can layer on things like the application of policy. You can really understand uh, your cost. Uh, you can understand how to govern access to those resources, how to secure those resources. I really, I really think that's truly transformational versus what you can get with other clouds. So most customers either run in a hybrid configuration, mm -hmm. and in fact, most customers now are also embracing multi-cloud configuration. Can you tell me more about how we are reimagining user management and identity in general in this new world? So identity is a super important focus in multi-cloud and when you're thinking about hybrid configurations where you've got on-prem uh, as well as something running outside of your corporate data center. We've made significant investments into the federation capabilities within our identity platform to enable interoperability with both traditional on-prem things like AD federation services as well as cloud-based um, alternatives like Azure AD. We've also got a enterprise-ready identity cloud service offering that can give you kind of everything uh, and interrupt to write really well with the applications portfolio. So pretty much whatever your challenge is, we think that we've got the identity building blocks to make you successful. Great, we have been serving on-premise customers for multiple decades now. Mm -hmm. uh, we are also serving our customers to build very valuable SaaS services. There's a bunch of user management that happens there. And there is a bunch of uh, user management and identity and access management that happens in Oracle Cloud infrastructure. How do you see this come together in your world? So I think that the future is people want a single way to reason about user provisioning, user entitlements. Uh, you know, has Vinay used this particular uh, right or privilege that he has in the last six months? So you end up with a single pane of glass, single place where you want to configure, enable people to have access to certain applications, understand whether they've used those applications, audit, um, I think that the, the journey towards a single pane of glass, we're not there yet, but we're making very good progress. Cost management mm -hmm. is something that we hear from enterprise customers almost every day. Absolutely. Right? And uh, when we talk to those customers, they're already using, let's say, Gen 1 Cloud. There are multiple options for them. And their complaint is, it's too complex. I have 56 pages of uh, you know, line items that I need to swift through to understand my usage. What are we doing in that space to make life easier for customers? So we've, uh, we've shipped a lot of stuff in the cost governance and cost management space over the last six months. Um, key ships in the last six months, probably usage reports. Mm -hmm. uh, this gives you an hourly insight into all of the resources running in Oracle Cloud. Um, it br can break it down using the uh, cost tracking tags feature on a sort of per department or a per cost center basis. So you can think about arbitrary application of tags to meet whatever your like, department wants in terms of internal cross-charge. On top of the uh, usage reports feature, we've got some cost forecasting uh, tools coming. We shipped a budget reports and budget alerts feature um, just a couple of months ago. This allows you to take the hierarchy of compartments and to say, I want uh, this dev compartment to stay under $2,000, or I don't expect this production compartment to exceed $10,000. You can then define thresholds within those budget alerts. So the, the likelihood that you're going to spend past your budget is decreasing less and less with the additional tools and visibility that we're giving you. Going forwards, one of the features that we're enabling is uh, you to define your own quotas for these compartments. Mm -hmm. So we're not just going to tell you when you run past a dollar number that you've configured. We're also going to give you the power to say, I, I don't want more than one exadata running in this compartment, or I don't want more than 50 CPU cores deployed within this compartment. 
Um, so you can kind of proactively manage the, uh, the deployment of resources across your enterprise. I hear you use compartment a lot. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about the power of compartments and why it is radically different and uh, compelling for enterprises? Yeah, absolutely. So we've got two different dimensions in which you can kind of categorize and, and reason about workloads. Um, every resource is launched into a compartment. The compartments uh, support a full kind of nesting or hierarchical um, relationship between one another. The second dimension that we've got is, is tags as well. A resource can only be in one compartment, but a resource can have many tags applied to it. Uh, typically, we see customers using compartments as a way to uh, either reflect their organizational hierarchy, or maybe we see them separate out environments like production and development, testing, user acceptance testing, um, into different compartments. Tagging then enables you to bring in those uh, elements like cost tracking tags give you cost centers. Um, tagging also may give you a way to, for example, indicate that resources uh, are being used within a PCI environment. So they've got additional kind of compliance and security concerns within your enterprise. Ultimately, we can dump all of that into a variety of reports for people so they understand what compartments they are, how they're being cross-charged, which ones might be needed for sort of uh, special care and attention from a security perspective because they've got compliance implications or risk implications. But between those two things, we think it's a very uh, powerful way to reason about the enterprise IT estate that you've got deployed in, in Oracle Cloud. Great. You're also responsible for simplifying user onboarding on OCI and also innovating on the commercial model that we offer to enterprise customers. Can you tell us more about it? So from the kind of sign up experience to, uh, to the end of a subscription, my team owns uh, the whole account workflow, the account lifecycle. Um, when you come in, we want to uh, give you the opportunity to provide as much intent to yourself as possible. So you're going to place an order, uh, or you'll come in as a trial customer. Uh, and you're going to first define kind of where do you want the home region, where do you want your data to be located. This is a key differentiator for Oracle Cloud Infrastructure versus some of the competitors that are in the marketplace. Um, we allow you very, very precise control over where does your account data live, where does your account metadata live. We won't replicate your data into other regions unless you've explicitly told us that's something that you want. Uh, you do that by clicking a subscribe button within the, uh, the Cloud Console. Yep. From the point that you've signed up, we've invested a lot in the sign-up process in the last uh, uh, sort of 12 months. We're now at a point where sign-up takes less than 30 seconds. You fill in some data and you click Go and you're in the Cloud Console and you can deploy resources. We're investing a lot into pulling together the experiences of infrastructure and applications. So that's all going to be visible in one place in the very near future. So some of the other alternatives that customers have where they have to go and buy certain products for certain duration and they pay for it for different discount. Some people call it as reserved model, right? And we absolutely broke those barrier of buying in cloud needs to be seamless subscription rather than buying a separate or individual product, right? Can you talk about the innovation that we have done there? Uh, so the, through the universal credit model, we enable customers to contract once yeah. for a certain set number of dollars over the contractual period, but they can use those dollars anywhere. You have a rate card that covers your usage of infrastructure, platform, uh, resources, anywhere in the world. Uh, you can spin up a database in Sydney tomorrow, and if the needs of your business change next week, you can spin down that database in Sydney, you can spin it up in London. You have complete flexibility to choose where you need infrastructure and platform resources to keep things, keep things running for your business. So how should customers think about compartments in the context of a large conglomerate like GE or Mitsubishi where they have multiple business units or a big global system integrator like Accenture, they are serving hundreds of customers. How does compartments and the concept of single account help these large customers? So I think a single account is the magic of a single order document, single set of contractual agreements. It's one thing that you've got to get through legal and finance. Once you've established that, you have a lot of flexibility via compartments to establish whatever hierarchy makes sense. So for a system integrator, you might see them uh, use compartments to delineate the territories that they're in. And then underneath that, you may find a compartment per customer. For a traditional enterprise organization, you might see the compartment hierarchy reflect more of the organizational hierarchy. It makes it very easy to reason about the resources that are deployed by that development team, uh, the costs that are being incurred by that development team. Um, it ties everything together really nicely. Thank you for sharing your uh, insights into the power of platform on OCI. Of course.